This is a very important video and I really recommend that you watch it to the end because I'm going to say stuff. First thing I'm going to say is I think I'm probably the best reviewer of audio gear in this hobby. Don't click out. You're going to miss all kinds of crazy comments. I use music to evaluate gear that plays back music. I always have. I talk about tracks, timestamps within the tracks. I take the graph of the item and then after listening to the music, and look at the graph, try to establish some kind of correlation like that graph because it's got elevated treble is probably why Jim Croce sounds very close to me and a little bit unnaturally so. And that, that bass emphasis over there is making it so Black Sabbath solo in Sweet Leaf is kind of overbearing and diminishing the quality of the entire replay across the mids and across the treble. I explain that automatically because I've got OCD and I, more info and colors is appealing to me. And I think it's appealing to others. It doesn't really turn out that way, but that's the way that my mind works. And I see other people talking about audio gear, and I don't really even know what they listen to. That I'm saying that in 2021 is bonkers. That might touch on music briefly, genres, maybe a track or two, but it seems to be a very minimal part of what is, I think, the biggest and most important part of the evaluation of audio gear, which is the music and how this stuff plays it back. And you're not going to get that from a graph. You're going to get indications. So let's get into this very quickly. This is going to be linked under here and some people may not know this but the Harman target curve is based on 250, 249, this version. 249 people. I want you to get your mind around that because it took me a little while to kind of fathom that. 200 and 50 people who adjusted the treble. I'm, I'm simplifying this. Read this at, at your own leisure. But 250 people adjusted the treble and the bass. M men and women, older and younger, mm, experienced qualified listeners, whatever the fuck that is. And then novices, whatever the fuck that is. I have no idea. There's no qualification in this hobby that I'm aware of that makes you mm, a fucking audiophile. I have no idea. I think I'm more audiophile than most people because I'm going for the faithful reproduction while other people keep passing off stuff that uh, doesn't quite match that. Let me go into something. Uh, I'll go to this. This is the planet Earth. <laughs> Did You knew that, right? Think about 250 people and the whole Earth and people all around it, people in Southeast Asia, people in Australia, people in the United States, people in Europe, people in South America, all in some way coming in touch with the Harmon Curve and someone telling them that something is good or not good because of how it relates to that curve that was created by 250 people. To further reinforce how small a number that is and ineffectual it is, it's fucking crazy. This is drop. You would be surprised, I hope not, that a lot of people don't even know what drop is. That's not part of their life. They have no idea. People come into my channel and ask me where can I get more information about something and I say, you know, here's a link to HeadFi, there's a community in here. They have no idea. Thanks so much. I had no idea that place existed. You go to HeadFi all the time. You know what HeadFi is. A lot of music lovers out there have no idea what it is. It's a link in their browser when they're looking for something else and they see the word forums and they skip because they don't want to deal with forums. You go to a HeadFi popular thread and you might see 30 active members and 40 visitors and they're I feel sorry for them because they're probably watching people that communicate like they're in a private forum, forgetting that they're in a public one, talking about crap and crapping on each other instead of talking about the item that the thread is dedicated to. So I direct people there, but it's almost wasting time. So a lot of people don't know what the hell HeadFi is. Less people know what Drop is, I'm pretty sure, or it could be the opposite. But not everybody that's into audio knows. This is the Sennheiser Jubilee, and 59,000 people have bought it. Not everybody that's watched Drop and seen this photograph and read this has bought it, but 59,000 people have been just on this site, and just this item, and bought it. 250 people is very small. It's a very, very small amount of people to be saying that something is good or is not good. And now I'm looking at my notes. Based on an average of 250 people, made popular by reviewers. My question is why? 
The obvious question, answer to that is mm, laziness because it makes their job easier. I watched a video. This is the only time I'm going to allude really to anybody if I can help myself. And the very final sentence in the video, which was really helpful otherwise, was it makes my job easier. Chuckle. And it's true that it does. It's safe. If you stick to that, you're probably not going to give a bad rec. It's going to be safe, but that's not the same thing as something that's good or great. I want to wreck great gear. I want to say that if you listen to Pink Floyd or you listen to Led Zeppelin or you listen to Tupac, you listen to Bob Marley, this set will be excellent for you. Playing this particular song at this particular timestamp, listen to that on your gear, imagine it better because I have what you have, it sounds better on the item that I'm telling you you ought to get. Like that context. It's never dawned on me to use the Harmon on the back of my graphs because it's not my target. It's not my preference. It's, it's horribly flawed. Let's take a look at it again. I'll point out a couple of things. This is not, first of all, if you see this on other people's, let me actually show you to this. This is audio discourse. I'm using this without permission, but I talked to Android today and I said, what is your target? Because I don't know it, but I thought he did some post about his Android's target. And I just, I don't have time. But today I thought, what is that actually? Well, like, what do you think is good? This dotted line is what a lot of people have on their videos or on their websites. And it's kind of become the default background image. Because 250 people said it was good and they put it in their videos and on their websites and make mass hypnosis occur and then everybody thinks that oh you know can you put a I've actually never had anybody on this channel ever say can you put a Harman you know overlay on your graph nobody's ever said that thank you to everybody out there I've never been asked to do that but a lot of people do it anyway for some kind of reference but they're referring to 250 fucking strangers I don't know what they listen to and 250 is a very small sample size. That's less than bought the GL2000 in about six hours right after Zio did a video for it. More people bought a single Chi-Fi headphone in a very short period of time than created a graph that is being held up as a standard by reviewers around the planet Earth. Let's look at a couple problems with it right away. That much bass over the mids is going to cause a problem. And this blue line is Android's. Let me stop right now. Android is a part of a community and he is usually he's on audio discourse and there's other members of that. I would argue that Android is probably the best listener and conveyor and we don't agree. Many times we don't and we've had other side issues but it's not related to audio directly. His hearing is very close to mine but he ha doesn't have obsessive compulsive disorder. He doesn't fixate on 10 second passages and, and play it 100 times. He just listens to music and enjoys it and comes to conclusions. I'm a big fan of the MEST. He is too. His graph is partly based on this and a set called the High Edition Viento B minus, I'm, I'm not sure. He said that this is really kind of a compilation of the two that he finds best. So this is his graph based on his listening experience. Mm, I guess the Harmons to keep up with the Joneses. Let's look at why what his is different. See this fall off? This is why the Moondrop Blessing 2 lacks a sense of air because of the rapid fall off and they do kind of follow the curb. And cymbal strikes don't have the energy that they should have because of this same curb. That cymbal strikes, so let's go out to this point and then carry it out. Cymbal strikes don't sound ideal with the ideal curve. And this is just my genre. There are instruments that are in the similar bandwidth, in the same range, fundamentally and harmonically, maybe as cymbals in your mm, orchestra music. I'm sure there is. There's got to be lots of stuff going on in the upper range. And when you de-emphasize something as rapidly as this, you're going to notice it. I notice it because I fixate on stuff that looks more like this than looks like this. And every time I see stuff that has a rapid decrease from this point, I can hear it. And when something's got this much more bass over the mids, I can hear it. It's not an ideal curve. This is Android's curve and you see it looks maybe uncomfortably balanced to you. 
I would tell you that it's actually not, and I'm going to go ahead and look at my own. And this mine doesn't look that different from his, and we came to these conclusions differently, though we both love the MEST. I've known that all the time. Look at mine, and I'll explain it to you. Sub bass over mid bass gives low frequency energy to bass, guitars, drums, deck mix hits. I need a little bit up over the mid bass. I can't have mid bass over. I can't have a rolled off sub bass. I can't. And I don't want it too much over, but I need to have it a little. I need the apex of the bass to be somewhere between 45 and 65 hertz and then coming down in a nice, very smooth glide. Number two is mid bass over mids. So sub bass over mid bass, mid bass over mids. Gives completion to bass guitars, kick drums, listening to the Thea Audio Monarch and Clairvoyance. I was the first one to have both of them in, in my possession. And I did a picture of the Monarch because it was the flagship and I started to hype the Monarch and then I started to listen and everything changed. I listened to a song because it's audio gear. And I'll show it to you because you probably already know. And it's the fourth album of Led Zeppelin. And it's called When the Levee Breaks. And it starts with an authoritative kick drum. And if you watch my channel, you're sick of hearing this. But audiophile is high fidelity and high fidelity is faithful audio reproduction. Whatever this was when it was done originally is what should be done if I'm listening to a set that's tuned for me, which is to be audiophile. I like bass, but bass is there when it's supposed to be and it's not when it's not supposed to be. When it's overly emphasized and then it does come in, that's when we have problems. When the levee breaks is supposed to be up and emphasized. And listening to the Monarch and it's emphasized sub bass over mid bass, I wasn't catching the... it sounded unnatural. Bass strings, eat a dead grasshopper, E-A-D-G, the, the four chords of the bass guitar. They, they sounded unnatural and then the narrative became that the monarch was maybe more towards EDM, trip hop, uh, trance and stuff like that whereas the clairvoyance would be more towards rock and roll and other genres. I knew that before everybody else because I had it before everybody else because I was biased towards the more expensive set and then started to fall in love with the more affordable set because it did stuff like this and then also the album right next to it which is Led Zeppelin 2 and a whole lot of love and uh, God other songs too where the bass would be mm, dominant by design and then it would set back into the mix and it wasn't doing that properly with the monarch but it was doing it with the clairvoyance it was like a proof of mm, theory I guess and that's how I came up with my mid bass it's got to be present and if the bass is elevated I'm okay with the illumination which really has a flat bass because one is not being o emphasized over the other that's cool but if I'm gonna have up sub bass I gotta have up mid bass too but not as much as the sub bass that's why this looks like this number three any dip or elevations in this area will result in issues with any and all instruments vocals whose fundamentals exist here on the square typo or prior Anything that happens in this range, 1K to, mm, let's say, 330 hertz, any dips, any bumps is going to affect everything here and prior because it will give mm, unnatural sound. This is really the area where you just can't mess around. You'd like to keep it nice and flat. Headphones have kind of weird stuff. I don't know that some of the more expensive focals have a little little bump here and there kind of in this range, but headphones is a different animal. I'm really focusing on IEMs right now. That's what this is for. Next is going to be number four. Too much peen again can impact vocals and guitars and create illusion of lack of bass even when proper amplitude of bass is present. Steel focus. Even if there is good amplitude and it looks just like this and I'm having a good time, if this peen again is too elevated, my brain is going to be stolen and being focused on... My brain is going to be stolen. My focus is going to be stolen and directed towards what is n the abnormally the anomaly, the emphasized treble, the vocals, the electric guitar, thing, harmonica, stuff that is like, even piano, keyboards, that is going to be stealing my focus and attention and it's going to give me the mm, psychoacoustical illusion of maybe lack of bass because I'm not really focusing on it. Even though it's there, 
Can you understand? That's like listening to tons and tons of bass, having mid-drivers that are doing exactly what they're supposed to do, but you can't hear it over the din of the bass. Your ability to perceive it has been diminished by the absolute over-amplification of the lower frequencies. Car audio, home audio, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's a fragile balance. So this is really important to me. And you'll notice that this graph in Androids, and please, this is, this is getting to the other thing. Why does every reviewer not have their own specific graph? Why does anybody use the Harman Target? Who are those 250 people? It doesn't work for rock and roll. I don't know what Android listens to, but it doesn't work for him apparently because he's implying by his graph that this is maybe a little bit too much energy at 3, 4, and 5K and 6K. And I'd agree with him. And he's also not rapidly de-emphasizing the later treble. I didn't see that until now. I'm. This is the same thing. Number six, reduce late treble below mids. So I want my later to be below the mids in ampl This is an amplitude scale. It's a volume scale pretty much. Reduce late treble below mids allows for completion of some needed info. Example given symbols. Keep psychoacoustic illusion of space and air. Drastic de-emphasis can take away sense of space and air. Also impact. There are harmonics that are occurring over here. That's why I want it to be gradually decreased, which is kind of what they're doing with Harmon, but it's a little bit abrupt for me. It impacts the library that I enjoy. Therefore, my recommendations mm, reflect that. Other people are doing reviews and they're leaning on a Harmon, even though it might not really reflect their actual joy, so why are they using it? What the hell is going on? Let me look at this. A safe wreck cannot be the same as the best. So if you're making a wreck and you're saying this is the safe bet based on 250 people that you've never met in your life, when constant feedback on forums, whether it's Reddit or HeadFi or under people's videos and saying, you know what, I just think it's too shouty blessing too. A lot of people say that. Almost everybody that didn't fall in love with that said the same thing. The graph would indicate to you that that much pina gain was going to do that. And in fact it did. And it's one of the biggest dings on the set. And when it was retuned, that was slightly adjusted. And the bass was slightly put up. And a person put his name on that. It was a better set. I knew that the first time. Look at my review of The Blessing 2 and I said I liked it, but these are things you should pay attention to because based on my library, I think I mentioned Jim Croce, talked about it can get on you the vocals. I didn't have a background Harmon to tell me that. I had my own graph of The Blessing 2 and my library to tell you that. Therefore, I'm the greatest reviewer in the hobby. I don't need a fucking thing based on 250 people. Holy shit. Next point. Harmon is the average. What is your input as a reviewer? What is your special contribution to the hobby that makes you valuable? Because you quietly, slowly talk about the specs and the build quality. Is that the thing that you do? My imagination is that reviewers of Audio Gear's special contribution is their ears and their library and their ability to, to express and articulate what is good and what is not bad about said item based on the music that they listen to. That's your thing, not 250 people stranger. Lay that out on a graph, pick it apart and say, you know what, that, that lack of energy at 6K is kind of taken away from a sense of presence. What, what in the fuck are you actually talking about? What song are you talking about that other people might be interested in or could maybe listen to that and say, yeah, I don't, I'm not hearing that, man. I put myself out there every single video, and sometimes people agree and sometimes they don't, but I'm exact and specific with why something is good and why it's not. And music is the key to giving them that info. That That's a unique thing is mind-boggling. Objective observation based on average. That's subjective. Let me read that again. Objective observation based on average. That's subjective. You are making... a uh, that's objective. You're taking other people's average of ideal and giving an opinion. That's that's subjective. That's not objective. You're not being subjective because you're looking at a graph and saying, this might be sobering to you, 
but this is the way it is because graphs don't lie. Well, the graph of the item you're listening to, stop comparing it to the Harmon, please. That doesn't say shit except what 250 people you never met. Do you know what they were listening to? Can I show you the planet Earth again and how many people are on it? It's, it's fucking stunning. The only objective part of the hobby is the graph. This is, I'm using auto discourse without permission, but Android can send me a mail and ask me to take it down. I won't, but if we put this on the internet, it's for consumption of others. And this is valuable and informative, so let me. This is a graph, and this is real. How you interpret it is mm, opinion. Mm, that's not objective. That's your opinion of what is happening to this. Let me show you something. This is the Harmonic Dine Zeus. I got it before anybody else, typically. And I, I thought immediately when I listened to it, it was, uh, I would never wreck it. And uh, I didn't know how to EQ or graph headphones at the time. I was sent a link to get that ear thing by Critical. I didn't have anything to measure this at the time. I, I didn't need to have anything to measure it. You see that bump between it's starting, it's it's still rising at 50 hertz, and it goes all the way out past 1K. This was called a concert hall by somebody. A fucking concert hall. You can't have a concert hall with mid-bass like this. Let me show you what this does. This is the same area, 50 to 1,000, and this is... Give me shelter. You can't catch it, but you get the point. This part, you can you can catch her. The drums, the bass is going to overwhelm everything because this whole region from 50 to 1,000 is being emphasized over everything else. Let's look at that real quick again. The only part of this frequency graph that exceeds the mid bass is mm, the peen again. Mm, the treble is this bar right here. This is the mid bass is as high as any part of the treble except the gain. That's a fucked up tuned headphone. When I sent a private message to the person that runs Linsoul, I said that's a piece of crap. I got no reply for like ten minutes because I think the response was not sure what to say because I said I that's. I had no idea what it looked like. This was months before anybody else had it besides myself. I just listened to my music and said, yeah, that's not going to work. That's not good. And then the graphs come along later. People are doing EQs for you. If you need to EQ a set when you get it out of a box, you should probably skip getting that set. How about that as a rule of thumb? If you need EQ, maybe you should skip that. This doesn't sound like a concert hall. It sounds like it looks, and that's a mess. That's Rolling Stones. How about Charles Bradley? This is just a singer and a guitarist, and this is the part that is emphasized over everything except one part. You can hear him. So the guitar and a part of his vocals are being pushed up over everything almost to the point of where the peen again is, which is supposed to correct and make parts of the vocal sound realistic, is battling with the mid bass for space. That's a crap set. How about this? Let's listen to this. Yeah. Th that's a fucking nightmare. So this is a garbage set. And looking at a graph, it looks like a garbage set. It's got nothing here. So the blue is his. This is the problem. I don't know about this because I've never been able to focus on it because this is just so craptastically garbage. I can't believe this is wrecked by people. There's so much stuff out there that's better than this that this would even be recommended to people. Blows my mind. And this set right here is actually fantastic. And it doesn't have a massive problem with the mid bass. And it doesn't have that much drastic sub bass roll off and the treble is 
Depends on your library, but if you're going to say something's good or bad, be specific. I'll tell you with the three tracks I just demonstrated, the zoo sounds like garbage. You better have an EQ correction. So we've got my graph, what I prefer. Can something sound different than this? Well, of course it can. I don't want everything to sound the same. The EJ07 doesn't sound like the MEST. MEST has more and better late treble than the EJ07. The EJ07's got a presentation that's unique, and I like it. And I don't want to recommend the same thing to everybody all the time. I also don't think that you can take this and port it over to headphones, actually. I don't think it's a very wise decision, but I'll get into that at a later time. Let me go ahead and drop this down. And then we'll go ahead and drop this down. Literally subject listener library preference. So you got an you got a graph and everything extrapolated is your opinion. Literally. The the, the listener, the listener's library, the listener's preference. There are no experts. There is well articulated opinions and nothing better than that. Mm. Export, there's none of in the artifact. And there are no experts in this community. I, if there were like some qualification, I'd take it because I would ace it. I'd crush everybody and blow their ashes into the wind because I'm a fucking boss. Everybody out there is good with video editing. They're good with being calm. They're good with whatever is their stick. But they're not into music. And I am. And this is music gear. And you'll never fucking escape that. The guy that came out with the color codes at the top of the fucking mm, graphs first that is in the hobby is me. That was taken from me because you can visualize the different sections of the graph more easy, which is what you're supposed to be doing to people. I talked about something where you you know put a graph. I won't get into that, but someone picked it up and then did it two weeks later because I do things first. Other people, a spider graph. Think about that for a second. A spider graph where you compare two things and you can visualize it on a plot. It's your opinion. Does it matter if you're putting it in a different form? No, it's just a different delivery system and it might feed the brain of more people than just a graph. To say that this compared to that looks better in these three parts, the treble, the mids, and the bass, but soundstage because of da-da-da is maybe actually seems to be bigger on the other set. The illumination by Moondrop in the bass does not look like something that I would be such a fan of, but its replay is exceptional. It's a very, very good set. I love it a lot, and it doesn't have any elevated bass. So that doesn't match my ideal graph, but it's really good. So that doesn't, I'm never going to use a graph and say, it's not good because it doesn't match my ideal graph. I certainly wouldn't use it and say, it doesn't match 250 strangers' opinions. 250 people came up with that based on a company going for an ideal correction for floor speakers on a, holy shit, please read it. Go ahead and read it. And the final thing before I close this down is don't ever use my channel to release your venom towards anybody else. Talk about the gear. Talk about mm, things that you don't like, things you didn't know. Educate me. Don't use my comment section or live streams when I start to do them to release your venom against somebody else because you're not appealing to me because you're thinking that the enemy the the main enemy of my enemy is my friend what the fuck am i thinking here the enemy of my enemy is my friend so we share the same the enemy of my enemy is my friend because we share that person so we, we don't like the the friend of my enemy that stuff doesn't work for me so if you see me and you think I don't think he likes this other reviewer, don't don't talk about that other reviewer to me in a bad way. I don't want to hear it. My opinions are based on interactions and DMs and stuff that you don't notice because you don't know certain things and when people say something in a live stream, I know that they're taking a shot at me or they're taking a shot at Zeos or something's coming and I can I can connect the dots completely because I know things that you don't know. So if that's why I say the things that I say because I know, because I'm in the hobby, and it's just my opinion. So don't try to appeal to me by shitting on people you think I don't like, and don't try to be nice to me for any reason, because that, that shit doesn't work. Talk about the gear and talk about the music, and that's it. I'm the best in the fucking hobby. Fucking deal with it.
Seriously. In a hobby dedicated to the replay of audio, I'm the only guy that bases his whole fucking pattern around the music. The presentation from the moment the video starts is about music. It's a spinning album slamming on the ground. And then you're met with an app that most people have no idea what it is because they keep asking me, that is designed to display your library easy to navigate and to show. And then the background is music that I like. So you're constantly bombarded with music because we are here for the music and the gear that plays it back good. Based on my opinion, based on my library, that's as far as it goes, but that's my contribution to the hobby is being me. So other people out there have a little more fucking confidence and be yourself. Fuck the Harmon curve. Put your curve up there and start measuring and that's what you like. So fucking stand on that hill and die on that hill because that's who the fuck you are. Share that with the community. I like this graph because this matches my library. You're not going to lose people and if you do you never really had them. Be you, man. Fuck Harmon. Fuck the 250 strangers. Safe is not good. Good is good. What is that? How did you come to that conclusion? Share that with everybody. What is your library? What is the thing that it does great? What is the thing that it doesn't do good? What is the song that made you come to that conclusion? Share that with people. That's what you contribute. If everybody did that, this hobby would be out fucking standing. We'd all be talking about music. We'd all be talking about the thing that is lacking on this set or that set based on music and not some averaged 250 people's line that means nothing, but everybody seems to think it means everything. It's fucking fascinating and depressing. And I'm out. I'm going to upload this. I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to put the intro and outro. Wake up. Follow people and listen to people that speak to you through the music. That's probably what you're already doing. If you're a reviewer, step the fuck out of your comfort zone. Put your preferred line and drop the fucking Harmon. Drop that fucking piece of garbage that doesn't give energy for cymbals, for shit in jazz, for stuff that is in orchestra. It doesn't do the job ideally, so stop fucking using it. It starts with you. The hobby gets improved. Can we do better than 250 mm, quote unquote mm, trained professionals, whatever the fuck that says? C can we do better than that? I think so. I can do my fucking part. I'm committing to a graph that I think is ideal and I can back it up with music and timestamps where people can go listen and say, I see what he's saying. I don't listen to that kind of music, but yeah, the bass sounds better like that. I can see why that bass is getting away. You can pin me down fucking like that. You got the song, the fucking timestamp. you got everything you need to say. What the fuck's he talking about? Or, I know exactly what the fuck he's talking about. If everybody in this hobby did that, it'd all be better. Train wreck. Needs EQ. What's the point? A concert hall. A concert hall. And that's the reality. That's it right there. That's the only real thing in the hobby. That is nobody's opinion. That is nobody's emotion. That is not, I don't like that reviewer, so I'm going to shit on this set because I know he likes it. It happens all the time. You all know it. It happens. It's fucking tragedy. It's the way it goes. That's a shit set. Looks like garbage. I'm using an example because it's so fucking blatant and it's recent. And there you go. And now I'm out.